On March 21st, 2010, after the Jabara family came home from a long weekend, Mauricio, the father, had taken his two daughters, four-year-old Paulette, seven-year-old Lizette, to a trip while their mother, Lizette, went on a trip with her friends and a supposed lover. That Sunday night, when the family came home, they put the girls to bed and went to bed themselves. The next morning, Paulette wasn't in her room. Nine days later, her body was found in her own bed. What happened to Paulette Jabara? On March 22, 2010, in Huixiclan, Mexico, the girls' nannies came in for work. They started off by waking up Paulette's older sister to get her ready for school. After Lisette left for school at around 7 a.m., an hour later at 8 a.m., the nannies went into Paulette's room to get her ready for preschool, and that's when they realized Paulette wasn't in bed. They hadn't checked on her all morning as they were too busy getting Lisette ready and making her breakfast. I think it is very important to mention that Paulette was partially disabled. This enabled her of walking and talking and making many other movements without assistance. After looking everywhere for Paulette and not finding her, the nannies began to panic and decided it was time to call the parents. After waking up, the nannies explained everything and as it turns out, the parents didn't really care. They just sat down with a cup of coffee and smoked. The nannies were astonished by their lack of emotion. Later, the father called to let his sister know of what was happening and that's when she decided to call the cops. After arriving, they searched all over the apartment and all over the building multiple times, but nothing was found. Over a hundred officers searched the apartment and her room and even brought in sniffer dogs to search, but nothing was found. According to the parents, during the night they heard or saw nothing unusual. Their dogs didn't react either and their alarm system never went off. There was also no sign of forced entry. Another thing that's important to mention is that the apartment was never treated as a crime scene. As a matter of fact, family members came over and even slept in Paulette's bed. A lot of people were suspicious of the parents themselves. They were so cold and didn't seem at all concerned for their daughter. As a matter of fact, Lisette even made a joke such as maybe she was taken by aliens. <laughs> And in another interview, she said that even if she lost Paula, she still had another daughter. The father, on the other hand, didn't really talk and let Lizette do most of the talking. Nine days after her disappearance, on March 31st, 2010, during an evidence search, Paulette was found. I am going to insert the footage of the discovery of her body, and I am warning you, it is very graphic. If you do not wish to watch the video, skip to the timestamp in the pinned comment. <laughs> Many people believe it is impossible for her body to have been there the whole time. And if it was, that means people made the bed, moved it, was checked hundreds of times by over a hundred officers, smelled by sniffer dogs, used to interview the mother, and even slept in by family members, all while her body was tucked in there. It is close to impossible. That's why many people believe she was placed there afterwards. 
Not only that, but if you pay attention in the video, one of the forensics even said while showing what seemed to be blood, they beat her. But why would someone do this? Who would do this? The first theory is that the parents did it. It is believed that the couple were having issues in their relationship. As I mentioned before, the mother was having an affair the day before her daughter's death. Not only that, but apparently the couple was also having financial issues. And that's why many people believe that the couple possibly shoved Paulette somewhere to ask for ransom money. That would explain why they were so calm that morning as they thought Paulette was safe. Once they saw the situation was getting out of control and went back for Paulette, she was dead. They then shoved her body in the bed frame. Others believe her older sister might have accidentally killed her and the parents covered it up. It was also later discovered that the mother had made some weird searches days before, indicating that perhaps she knew Paulette was going to go missing. Microphones were placed in the home of the family without their knowledge. In these recordings, it is heard how the mother is telling her daughter exactly what to tell the police, because if she didn't, the police would misinterpret what had happened. A lot of people found this extremely suspicious. The next theory is that the nannies might have something to do. Perhaps they wanted ransom money and accidentally killed her. Others believe the parents got tired of wasting thousands on Paulette's treatments, therapy, and medication and decided to get rid of her due to their financial problems. Even with all of this information present, Paulette's death was still ruled an accidental suffocation. Multiple other autopsies were made on the girl days later, and according to these doctors, Paulette had only been dead for about three days, meaning there was at least four days after she went missing where she was still alive. But still, the official report says that she was already dead for nine days and that it was an accidental suffocation. Other people also don't understand how it is that she got stuck in the bed frame. It was way too tight for her to just fall in. She had to be shoved in there. The official story was that in the middle of the night, Paulette managed to somehow snake her way to the end of the bed and got stuck. Since her physical movement was restricted as well as her speech, she couldn't get out or call for help, therefore leading to her death. But what do you believe? <laughs>